Hi everyone, this is Anna Brandt. Today we're going to go over some of the most frequently asked questions that I receive from around the world almost every day. How firm is your beanbag? What is the transmitter used for on top of the camera? What's the perfect bowl, the best bucket? Can you measure things for me? I get these questions all the time. So today I just wanted to address some of those frequently asked questions and hopefully it will help you in your journey. As a newborn photographer of 20 years, I want to use things that are simple. So I look for the best products, the ones that can just make my job so much easier. We all know that newborn babies are very unpredictable. So if you have the right tools for the job, you don't have to worry about them. I don't want to fuss with my beanbag. I don't want to have to roll up towels and stick them under a newborn. I want to have posers that I can slide on it right under. I want to have a beanbag that's firm, but not too firm, that allows me to create a nice dip for the baby's belly. Many times beanbags are just way too soft or they're way too firm. If they're too firm and it feels like your baby's gonna bounce right off of it, then you need to wear it down a little bit. Either take out some of the beans or jump up and down on it. My beanbag is somewhere in the middle. It's definitely not too soft. We have to work to create a well and I'm gonna show it to you. In addition, I hate things that are slippery and most beanbag covers are vinyl and those are slippery. So you can see on my beanbag, which is the original Paloma shell beanbag. People ask me all the time, which version do I have? Do I have a donut hole in the middle? I have the original version that I brought back from Brazil years ago. So they've gone through many changes. I'm very happy with it. I'm one of those people, if I'm happy with something, I won't change it. We did receive several of these for our conferences. And so we have ones with donut holes in there. We have one in New York for when I travel there that has an opening in the middle. I, pretty much any system from Paul Michel I'm going to use. I support this product 500% because to me, it is one of the best products on the market. Now, what we did was we made our own covers. And the reason we made our own covers is I don't like things that slip. So this is vinyl. It's going to slip and slide. Some people, what they'll do is put the the mats used, the no slip mats used for carpets, they'll put them on there. Uh, and that's fine. I, I find even those slip. So I like having a cover that I can wash and prevents slipping. So what you're going to see is if you see up close, you can see that if I put my hand here, I can get a nice well. And so you can see it's not too firm. If you do this and you can't see a nice well or a nice roundness, your beanbag's probably too firm. In addition, if there's a lot of extra space around here, then your beanbag's probably too loose. When we put the baby here, we're gonna really push down and do a nice well in the back so that the baby is firm here. And there's a nice graduated dip here, okay? And what's great is we can just push, you know, in different areas. People always say, what do you fill it with? The standard beanbag fill. You can get it at uline.com, but whatever the standard beanbag fill is. You never want to fill a beanbag with foam. Why? Because foam bounces back. I've used beanbags where they have foam inside and it will never keep the well. It will just bounce right back. So never use foam. And so that's it. It's a one piece. I love it because I can clamp. I use alligator clips from Amazon. They're towel clips and I'll show them to you. And they, what's so great about the towel clips is as a woman, I feel like the other clamps are hard to squeeze. So if I'm in a session and I have a clamp that's too hard to squeeze, it's going to drive me crazy. So these are just towel clips from Amazon and they're so easy. Kids love them. Toddlers will spend more time. We have some, I don't even think we have our Nemo ones anymore, um, but we had some Nemo ones that kept disappearing. I seriously think our toddlers were taking them home, but toddlers um, love these. They love the brightness of them. I love them because I can just do this and the other clamps, they're just too hard to squeeze. And again, I'm looking for ease of use. My time and my attention has to be toward the baby, 
babies, children, family, it has to be towards the subject. I don't want to think about my props. I don't want to think about my lighting. I want things that are super easy to use. And the minute I find that something is too difficult to squeeze, I get something else. If I'm fussing with it too much, I get something else. If it's too small, I'll get something else. I encourage you that if you are a newborn photographer, have the right tools for the job. It will make your job 10 times easier. Let's talk about my yoga ball. People ask me all the time, why do you sit on a yoga ball? And do you ever fall off? I actually don't fall off of yoga balls. I fall off of ladders and other things and stools. Yoga balls, I don't fall off. And I did yoga for a long time. And yoga always teaches you to center your core. Well, babies love movement. We know this. So when I'm wrapping a baby, if I have a really fussy baby, I'll put them on my lap and I'll just start bouncing. When I do that, I'm completely relaxed in my body. The only thing really doing the work is my core. My legs are actually pretty relaxed. My heels are pressing on the side of the yoga ball and keeping me here. Now, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, Anna, my lap is too short. I, people say that all the time. They'll say their lap is too short. Maybe their belly's in the way. Maybe their boobs are in the way. Or they're just very petite in the knees. And if that's the case, a couple of things. Number one, there are different size yoga balls. This one that I use, I believe is 65 centimeters. I'm going to verify that. In the list, I'll have the list of all of my sources and the measurements. I believe it's 65 centimeters. And, but they have ones 55, they have ones 75. So if you're really petite, I'm 5'3", and this is a perfect size for me. If you are five feet or under, you would probably want a 55 centimeter. If you are taller than me, you'd want a 75 centimeter or more. If regardless the size of your yoga ball, your lap is still too small, maybe your belly's big, maybe you're pregnant, maybe your boobs are big, and you just can't do it, that's fine. Then use whatever you would use to wrap a baby. For me personally, I love the yoga ball. I can take a screamy, fussy baby, and when I start bouncing, they calm down almost immediately. You want to make sure that you always hold the baby's head, and you never want the baby's head or neck bouncing around. In addition, you never want to do an aggressive bounce. My bounce is very small, and it's equivalent to if I was standing and rocking the baby. Many times in a parent shoot, if the baby is super fussy and a dad is holding baby, I will ask him to sit down on the yoga ball. When we do that, we always guide dad to make sure that he sits down comfortably and we're standing right by. Now, a lot of people say, Anna, I'm still going to fall on my face on the yoga ball. If that's the case, there is another yoga ball that we have and it has feet on the bottom. This yoga ball is actually produced in Italy, so there is no smell to it and it's great material and it won't go anywhere. So the feet will keep you steady and you can rest comfortably. A lot of parents use this in their nursery or by the bed because they can just get out of bed and just bounce. If you are a parent watching this, not a photographer, and you're just looking for ways to soothe your baby, I highly recommend a yoga ball. Because when you're standing, your, your shoulders are using excess energy and you're you're moving around and, and you want to just relax yourself. Remember that babies are drawn to your energy. So if you can just relax and breathe and just bounce gently, you'll find that the baby will really love it. Now, we're going to talk about another bean bag that I've been using for years. And it's from Pottery Barn. It is in the Pottery Barn teen department. And there is a nice dip in this bean bag. It is a small cover with a large insert or a medium cover with a large insert. What does that mean? This cover, this Flocati cover comes off. What's great about it is you can wash it. Many times, almost every session, I start here and I take my favorite bowl, which we'll be talking about bowls, and I put the bowl in here and then I put the fur over it. What's great about that is I can stand and lean over and shoot down and work with the baby in the bowl and get that nice round look with furs, as you can see in some of the sample photos. I use both bean bags almost in every single session. If I were to go to a home session, I would probably throw this in my car. 
We're gonna talk about my favorite bowls. This is one of them. I just throw it inside and you can see how perfectly it fits in there. Then I can throw the fur on top of it and it allows me to get a great shape with the baby and get a nice C position as you're gonna see in the sample photos. I think that you need a good bowl and you need a good bean bag. Whether you only have one bean bag, make sure that it's for the right purpose and it makes your job much easier. So we're going to talk about lighting really quickly and then I'm gonna go into my favorite props, show you all the measurements and tell you the tools that I know work the best for me. Let's talk about lighting. I currently use Profoto lighting and I absolutely love Profoto lighting. One of the biggest questions out in the universe is, is lighting safe for newborns? When a parent is asking that, they're usually asking about flash. Parent doesn't really know the difference between a strobe or a flash or continuous light. So you need to educate them. If somebody were to ask me, is flash photography, lights, studio lights, whatever they're saying, is it safe for newborns? What I would say is I do not believe that direct flash is safe for a newborn's eyes. I don't think direct flash should be used in anybody's eyes. I do not use direct flash and I never have. I do not use continuous and I do not use on or off camera flash. What I do use are strobes. I use Profoto strobes and Profoto actually is the only light that I know that has UV coating on it. Regardless of whether you use Profoto or another type of light, you want to always make sure that there is a diffuser between the bulb and the subject. I use PLM. I use a shoot through umbrella. The umbrella that I currently have and you're seeing in the video is a 65 inch PLM from Profoto. Now you can use 65, you can use 85, you can use whatever size you like. Just understand that if you have a nice big umbrella, it's going to spread nice soft lighting. The difference between the bulb and the actual subject's face is anywhere from six to eight feet. In addition, the light is never shined directly on the baby's face. I do also use diffusers in natural light. If you do, not use a, you do not use a diffuser with natural light, I highly recommend you do so. I've listed my source for my favorite five-in-one kit. A five-in-one allows you to have silver or gold reflectors as well as diffusion. If you don't have a diffuser, you can use sheer curtains or other things. I never use natural light directly. I always diffuse it. Why? I shoot all over the world and I want my lighting to look the same. If I use a diffuser on natural light, it's going to look very similar to my studio lighting. What I love about studio lighting is you have complete control. I remember being terrified of studio lighting. I remember feeling like I was in over my head and I had no idea what I was doing. And it took me a really long time to understand it. At the end of the day, what I figured out is light is light. Whether it's natural light or studio light, you just need to learn how to use it. I have several courses on lighting, so I'm not going to go into how to use light. But I am going to answer one of the most commonly used questions is, is the light always on and how do you fire the light? The reason people always ask if the light is always on is because they see the modeling light. The modeling light is really there just for the photographer. You don't need it. It's so the photographer can see where the light is showing. Many people, once their model lights break, they don't even bother replacing them or they don't even use a model light. You don't have to use a model light for your light to work. Two different things. Model light is just showing you the scene, okay? Now, with that being said, people always ask, are my lights on while I'm shooting? And if so, why? I have white energy saving lights. Southern California Edison changed my lights, ooh, about six or seven years ago. I don't have any yellow glare from the lights above. So for me, working with studio lights, it doesn't have any effect on my image. The studio light should overpower the lights in your room. A simple way to test that is set your camera to your studio light like you're going to take a picture and go ahead and take a picture. Now turn off your transmitter that transmits the light and take another picture. Your picture is going to be dark, correct? So you can test it on your own. I do not use continuous lights. Continuous lights are lights that are always on. And so a lot of people think that I use continuous lights because they see my model light. Then people say, what is it that's on top of your camera? What's on top of my camera is a transmitter. With Profoto, you only need one because the other one is built into the light. You can also increase or decrease the power of the light. You can set up a master and a slave. So I use one light 90% of the time. 
if I'm going to use a second light or a fill, I can set the main light to be a master and the fill light to be a slave. When you hit fire or click your shutter, it will fire both. Okay. Now, what if you don't use Profoto? If you don't use Profoto and you're getting Pocket Wizard, which will work for any light, these work with Profoto as well. I highly recommend always having backups, always. While we have a Profoto trigger, we also have backup Pocket Wizards. Now, there are a couple of different versions. Whether you have Alien B, Einstein, Alien Chrome, or whatever lights that you have, you need some way to trigger the light. There are also sync cords that you can plug into the camera and attach to the light. All cameras and all lights will have an opening for a sync cord. It's always good to have a sync cord in your bag as a backup in case you run out of batteries and you have nothing to trigger the light. My sync cord has saved me thousands of times around the world. Now, you have transceiver, transmitter, receiver, and it can get very confusing. Transceiver, you have all kinds of things and it can get so confusing. Basically, you need to transmit and receive right? You need a signal to go to the light and the light to go back to the camera. So if you have a transceiver, let's say you have two, of, you would need two. You need two of something. If you have a transceiver and you have only two transceivers, you can put a transceiver on the camera and on the light. If you have a transmitter and a receiver, that will also work. But if you have two transmitters or two receivers, it won't work. Does that make sense? You need something to transmit and receive. So you either have one or E of each, or you have one that does both. It, when in doubt, always talk to the company where you're buying the equipment from. Let them know the camera that you have and the lights that you have, and make sure that you have proper equipment that can fire the light. One more thing I want to say, the Profoto one has different models for Nikon or Canon. And you may want to find out which one works for Sony or whatever camera model you have. The pocket wizards are universal and will work for any camera, but just keep that in mind. Whenever you are purchasing light or a transmitter or a transceiver, always make sure you talk with the supplier and let them know the camera that you have and what you need to properly execute the lights during a session. Let's talk about what's in my cart. I actually publish a magazine, Belly Baby, the magazine, and you can find it in our store or on the magazine website. There's links in the video. And we have a great article here by Luann Warner Prokos, and it's What's in Your Cart? And she interviewed several photographers to ask them what's in their cart. And it's a great little article because we all do things just a little bit differently. And I'm going to show you my cart. This is from Michael's. You could get them at, I think, Ikea as well. And I have these attachments. These attachments came from Ikea. And I love them because I can just throw them on and I can have my sanitizer here. I have my clips, which are invaluable from Home Depot. And there'll be a link in the source as well. So I keep the clips on the side. I have two types of shusher and white noise. Why? The orange one is for those fussy babies that need a really loud shushing. You know who they are. When the baby is nice and calm and they don't need loud shushing in their ear, then we use just white noise. What's great about the white noise is it's very soothing and babies love it. So we use at least one of these during a session, sometimes both, um, but they're invaluable to have. I have scissors in here because I always need to cut a thread or something. Always be careful when you have scissors around babies. Of course, we have wipes for the inevitable spills. With that being said, we always keep chucks in the cart. Chucks, these are not pee pads, these are chucks that we put on our lap when we're undressing baby or in between or if dad's holding baby naked and the poop is coming and he's wearing suede shoes, we'll lay these over dad's shoes. They're great, wrap them up, throw them away. I literally cannot leave without these. I tell parents when you're changing the baby on the bed in the middle of the night, have a chuck. It will save lots of laundry. I also love to use posers. My favorite posers are from Little Prop. I can't stand rolling up towels and shoving them underneath. If you're someone that does it and it's working for you, great. I said in the beginning of this video, I like things that are very simple. With the chin on hand pose, this is the only thing I use with chin on hand. This is it. And it's just very simple. Baby on the back, same thing. I love the Little Prop posers. They have many different sizes. 
I also have the Bambinas, and these are from my store, and we have them manufactured in a metal cook community. We have covers that you can purchase. And what's great about the Bambinas is they go underneath the baby's head when working on the floor. And we have sizes for child and adult. These are very, um, these are amazing because they support the back of the head, especially when working on a hard floor. You can find these in our store. Now, I also have these little teeny tiny bean bags that I think we found in a teacher's supply. And they're meant for all kinds of other things, but we love using them when we have paper and we need to like backdrop paper and we need to just press it down in the corners. So they're great to have. Let's see what else is in my cart? Just a few other posers. Um, I do have a weighted blanket in here that I don't even know where it came from. It was a gift. But weighted blanket is great when you have a fussy baby and you put their hand on them and they are moving around and they're just fussy. This is just basically a rice bag and you could make your own and it's just great to lay on the baby. And that's it. So that's what's in my cart. I can put my drink in here, my phone in here and just move it around as needed. Whatever you do, make sure that you have a cart handy with supplies that you need. Now let's talk about my favorite thing, props. So here's the thing. I travel a lot. Well, not now, not at the moment, but I've traveled a lot. And there have been so many times where I haven't brought something I use, thinking it'll be on the other side when I get there. And then I get so disappointed only because I know the props that work. Trust me when I tell you I've used so many different things. And like I said in the beginning of the video, I want things that are simple and easy to use, that are the right size, and they work. Buckets is the hardest thing. So many people, their buckets are too big or too small. Now, this bucket is a typical 10-gallon bucket. I have a cover that we sell in our store, and what's great about these fabric covers is they are removable and they are washable. They come with matching wraps and you can simply take them off and then you don't have to keep buying different color buckets. And this bucket was green and then I painted it with black chalkboard paint and you can see on the bottom it says 10. It's just a 10 gallon bucket. Now, the diameter is a little more than 10 and it's nine deep, nine height, nine height, sorry. So nine height and di diameter is about 10 and a half, okay? I have done other videos where I've said use arm as an indicator, meaning if you have a bowl and you put your arm in it and bend at the wrist, if you can fit your arm in it, you can fit a baby in it. The reason I came up with that, gosh, like 10 years ago, was because I would always put babies on dad's arms or mom's arms and I would see that the baby curled up would be about this size. It kind of works regardless of the arm size. So with that being said, you could kind of do it with the bucket as well. All right. The challenge I see is buckets are too wide. They're really wide or really small. You just want a typical standard 10 gallon bucket. You can find it at any hardware store. Okay get yourself a cover, a washable cover, it's even better. There's a group, Hello Props, that has magnetic covers that I love. I'll show you those. And the magnetic covers you can just put on and put on in the inside, and I love them. They sell out fast, so they're hard to get. So I use both. I use my own covers, and I also use their covers as well, and I'll link to their store. I love to work with companies that have created amazing products that are for the newborn industry. I think it's fabulous. These are magnetic covers and I've put the source in our list. What I love about these, putting them backwards, there we go, is they're magnetic. You just pop them on and then you put one on the inside. Super fun product. I think it's a great product. And you can check them out. Now, the other question I get all the time is, what do you put in the bucket? 
If you're leaning the bucket, the baby over the bucket, like chin on hands, or the baby is wrapped like a potato and sitting in it, whatever you do, you need something, obviously, because this is a little bigger than a newborn. I told you already that I love working with companies that make amazing products. This is one of those products. This is from Modest Little Me. And Mallory has made a washable cover because they get really dirty. So she has a great cover. And what's great about this is there's a weight. I use a weight in the bottom of my bucket, okay? This is a five pound disc weight from amazon.com. Because you have a nine, 10 pound baby in here, the bucket's gonna move. So you would put this in the bottom. Now it's gonna be hard to move, okay? So safety first, you put a weight in the bottom of the bucket. Now, you can fill this with whatever you want. I've seen everything. People shove towels and posers and all sorts of things in there. But when I'm working, I need to just slide that baby in, get the shot and go. I always work with an assistant with a bucket. You never ever wanna leave a baby unattended in a bucket, especially because their reflexes can allow them to lift themselves up right out of the bucket. So you need to have a spotter near the bucket. You need to have a weight in the bucket. Then you need proper padding because you never want to put your baby's head on that. You hear that? That hurts my knuckles. So there should always be something soft here, okay? Now, Modest Little Me has these great bucket covers with removable washable covers. What's great about that is they also have a weight. So if you open up the bottom, they have a sand weight in here, which is super nice. You can pop it back in, which by the way, you can take this out and just wash the whole cover, which I think I'm gonna do today. So we're gonna snap this back up. It has wire, this is such a great product. So you're going to put it in the bucket. And what's great about this is the wire will bend over the side of the bucket. Now, when I do this, it doesn't sound like this. So if you hear this, too hard for baby. When you do this, it's much softer and baby will be much happier. So once we do this, you can see that there's still probably gonna be some room depending upon the size of the baby. That's where we'll add a poser and we'll put a poser in the bottom. See that? And so then you put your wraps and everything over here. Again, I always have an assistant close by and she hands me all the things that I need for successful bucket shooting. Let's talk about bowls. I can't live without a good bowl. I have lugged my bowls to 30 countries. I need a bowl. I need a really good bowl. I need a bowl that has the right depth for a baby. Too many times ba bowls are too big, too small, or too shallow. I can use a shallow bowl, and you see I have a more shallow bowl here, but I need a good width. I need to make sure that I can curl that baby in. So this bowl I've linked, which is in our store, Edge to edge, it's 17, but inside it's only 14. Again, do the arm test, you're totally fine. Usually between 12 to 14 and you're, you're fine. And the depth is about five to six inches. So this one, the depth is mm, about four to five inches. Edge to edge, it's 15 and inside it's 12. So you want a diameter of at least around 12. You could probably do 10 if you had a really tiny baby, but you should have between 12 to 14. I can't tell you if I had to leave with just one thing, it would be a bowl. You need a good, solid bowl when working with newborns. Let's talk about beds. I love beds. I have like seven of them. And I put the vendor on the screen for this bed. What I love about them is they have removable sides. Look at this. Isn't this genius? I love working with people that are so brilliant. Look at that. So you just slide it in. Look at that, isn't that amazing? Girl, boy, I don't use this bed as often as I should. And you just slide it in. That's this bed, they have multiple sides, fantastic. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six different looks, seven in this one bed. So this is a fantastic bed, as well as this one. And I also listed the vendor in the video as well. I just love it. My clients probably love this bed more than anything because it's just dainty and sweet. What's great about both of these beds is they're amazing for toddlers that are two, three years of age. Because whenever you're working with children and newborns, you always want to make sure that the newborn is stable. 
okay? Because we know that that child is going to be completely unpredictable. And asking a two or three year old toddler to hold the baby or lay down next to a baby is almost impossible. So what I'll do, as you can see in the photos, is I'll get the baby stationed in this bed, get a great shot of just the baby, and then add the toddler. Always have a spotter close by. Never, ever leave a baby unattended and make sure that the parent is close by as well because we all know that children are very unpredictable. The last prep we're going to talk about is the new fun shapes that are coming out. The moon, the heart, these are fantastic shapes. You'll see in the photos that I use them as standalone so you can see the prop, but also underneath a blanket. And you'll see samples in the video. When the prop is underneath the blanket, I need my assistant to press the material down so I can see the shape of the prop. Now, these props are sold to the newborn industry, and they are usually the right size for newborn. Now, was that the original purpose of this prop? Actually, no. Most of these props were just home decor, um, used for fruits and vegetables and all sorts of things, and the prop industry kind of took over them. Now, there are different sizes, and it's important when working with a single baby or twins. So this bottom part is nice and small and is a great for a single baby. And I have all the sources and the measurements listed. But edge to edge, it's 15, but inside, 14. Like I said earlier, just like a bowl, you want between 12 and 14 inside. Remember the length of a baby. Almost every single day, I ask my clients, how long was the baby at birth? I ask this question all the time. I remember my own children, how, how they were. And I have very tall children, and they were all between 20 and 21 inches long. Now I'm the shortest one in the family. If you've seen my kids, you know they're very tall and long. They were also long at birth. So many clients, if I see, gosh, that baby's pretty long, I'll say to the parent, oh, what was the length at birth? And if they say 20 to 21, I know in my head kind of the size of that baby. I'd say on average, it's between 19 and 20 inches long. And so that's if the baby was stretched out head to toe, but the baby is always curled. So that's why around 14 inches is good because the five inches is being taken away in the curl. If I measure my arm from tip to elbow, it's 15 inches long, okay? And I don't need to put a baby this length. The 14 is a good measurement. So just kind of keep those measurements in the back of your mind. In addition, I have a million of these. You can probably find them in my purse, in my car, wherever I go, I'm looking for a measuring tape. I seriously probably own about 50 of these things and they're all over the place. Whenever I'm out in a home decor store or wherever I am, I'm always measuring things. Whenever you're purchasing from a vendor, always make sure to check the measurements because nothing's more disappointing than getting something too big or too small. This is perfect for just an average size baby. The challenge is when you have a bigger baby, a nine or a 10 pound baby, and they're 21 inches long. You need something a little bit bigger, which is why I have both. This inside is 16 inches. And keep in mind, so it's 16 in the triangle shape of a heart. And then the depth is about five to six inches, same as the bowl. And then there's an even bigger one. Keep in mind, one is curved, one is flat. You can see in the photo that I've shown that I use felt from a Baba Baby props as well as Hanita props. And I shape babies quite often in this mold. And so when I'm working with twins, I need the bigger sizes. So if you're just starting out and you can only afford one, then just afford the smaller one. Um, otherwise, you can do the bigger ones. We are going to be renting props soon, so you'll be able to rent these from our store. I hope this gives you information, whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned newborn photographer or you're a parent at home and you've stumbled upon this video to learn a little bit more about taking your own newborn photos. I hope that I've given you maybe just some information that allow you to just be a little bit better in your photographic journey. I'm Anna Brandt and thank you for watching.